Hey, it's Johara. Welcome back to my channel. So, um, I'm going to do the uh, book review for the fourth and final book of the Monk Pass series. So, yay! So, this one obviously has a lot to do with Dr. Laura. I, I love her. She's my favorite um, in books and movies. Um, my second and third favorite characters aren't on the series, sadly. Uh, my second favorite character is Twyla. My third is Abby. Um, uh, so yeah, um, in this book, Jack and Laura and Claude are together, um, which Claudine has issues with. <laughs> um, but I shipped them to my favorite couple, so I'm so glad they're together in this series in this series because they're not together in the reboot sadly because the Cla well, they don't even have Claude as a character I mean they took away a lot of characters including Claude and that makes me sad because Jack Warren and Claude are everything so basically everything is fine now um, the monsters are accepted with the normies and they all coexist um, it does mention Becca once but she wasn't in the third book she transferred to school probably because of all the uh, havoc she had uh, wreaked um, so yeah so that's what happened to her. Um, so uh, Dracula decides that the monsters should get their own school and was going to name it Ratchet High. Um, uh, and uh, she, Dracula Laura has a lot of issues with Dracula because um, he's like never around. And lately he has been around. He's actually been home instead of, and they haven't been communicating through like text or video chat or something. Um, which she likes, but at the same time, he still was kind of ignoring her, you know, was always too busy on the phone and doing business, and, um, she's really close to her uncle Vlad, though, um, who's always on her side and defends her against his brother. Um, so that's an issue. So, so, um, they find out about this whole, um, school, which none of them like because, um, uh, they had come so far, fought for their rights, and they've come all the way, uh, all this way to what, separate now? Like, seriously. Um, so, uh, Frankie and her boyfriend, Brett, are we're trying to compete, because, uh, Jack Laura made a, actually stood up to Dracula a couple times in this book. Uh, some of my favorite scenes when fighting some of them, because there's, when she, when she stood up to him um, went in front of everyone when, when they were all talking about the new school. Um, let's see. Yeah, he didn't even know about the contest because um, cause she she had entered the school into a contest where this really high like fashion designer would ad advertise the school, I guess, or something, and like remodel it and name it after her company or something. So. Uh, she had entered the school in that, and she was one of the finalists. And her dad didn't even know about it. She tried telling him, but she, he got too busy with calls and stuff, and pretty much ignored her. Um, uh, Uh, but she stood up to him. Claude was like, be careful, because he's sweet, he cares about her. Oh, I shit this so much. Um, but then uh, she uh, stands up to him again. And she pretty much yells at him as like, how you're never here. I want you to see me, actual me. And uh, how important this is to me, this and that. And, um... So they decided to make a deal. If she wins this contest, then they all stay at Mushkin High, and if not, then all the monsters go to Ratchet High, which is being, which is in construction. Um, and it will be ready for the following school year because it's almost summer at this point. Um, so while she's getting ready to um, present the school, like getting ready for the band, make sure the school is cleaned up properly and um, banners and uh, stuff, you know, to make um, them feel welcome. Um, Frankie and Brett were, um, I lost my train of thought, um, trying, because there was going to be a spokesmodel couple. Drake Laura originally wanted to do it with Claude, but she doesn't show up in pictures. So, um, there was, there's going to be this contest in the school with votes for who they thought should do it. So, 
uh, Frankie and Bev were running, so was um, uh, Cleo and Deuce, and uh, Haley, Haley was uh, Brad, uh, Brad, what? No. Um, I can't think of again. Oh, what's her name? Becca, that's her name, that's her name. Uh, <laughs> Haley was uh, Becca's um, friend who, um, you know, ended up not being her friend anymore because Becca was a loyal jerk to everyone, even her. Um, and it's funny because when I first read, because the first book she, I actually kind of liked her. She was loyal to her friend, even more so than Brad, who was her boyfriend at the time. Um, she, and she always said that friends first. And I thought that, like, um, during that one scene, I, I probably mentioned, I, sh I probably mentioned it in the, um, uh, video for the review, she was like, um, uh, uh, she, uh, Brett and Heath wanted to scare, uh, the girls, um, I mean, Becca knew about it, but he, um, wanted to scare them for his video to, like, fi find real, like, action shots, I guess, and she ended up telling them when they were gone, getting ready to scare them, because she was like friends first, and so she was loyal to it. And, but then everything changed once she got jealous of Frankie and Brett. And at the end of the book, I no longer liked her. Uh, I mean, she was never one of my favorite characters, not even close. But you know, I liked her because she was loyal to her friends no matter what, and that's an admirable, admirable trait. But then she turns on Melody just like that at the same time. It's like, what happens to loyalty? I mean, I guess I at some point I get it because to her eyes, Melody wasn't being loyal to. Becca and she chose Jackson over her even though Becca would choose Melody over Brett, at least at that point she would have. And so I guess I kind of get why she would have turned on Melody, like, um, but she still ordered Haley around, it was wrong. But of course in this book I stopped liking Haley because she became kind of like the new Becca, except not as bad. Um, but yeah, she, I guess finally being in the spotlight got her. I don't know. Moving on, but yeah. so. Um, and while that was happening, Melody ends up singing on stage for the first time since she was a kid with her singing voice back and everything. Um, and then she really liked it. Um, the lead singer got kicked out of the band because they were holding auditions and she had auditioned. Uh, she, um, Candace signed her up and right before she found out, Candace signed her up to audition. Um, her and Jackson agreed to, um, ha for the, to have these interviews for this ca summer camp thing where they'll be counselors. Um, and uh, Melody, I don't know, I, I, I love Melody, but in this book, she, she wasn't being fair to Jackson. Yes, Jackson probably should have been a little bit more supportive um, with her, but she, it's hard to be supportive with her when she, when she was acting the way she was acting. Like, she was kind of just blowing off Jackson so, um, when she got the gig at the, um, uh, sh she said she didn't have any summer plans, and... Um, even though she technically did, I mean, they may or uh, they might may or may not have gotten the um, gig, but still, they ended up getting it, and she still chose the tour, which I get it because this is her dream, and when and this is like a, a one in a lifetime opportunity. But at the same time, um, she made a commitment to Jackson first to do this thing, so it's just it's like you can see from both point of views. You know, Melody was being unfair to Jackson. And Jackson could have been a little bit more supportive of Melody's dreams, but yeah, so it's like it's like one of those situations where you can't pick a side because you see, like, you understand both sides, you agree with both sides, disagree with both sides, all at the same time. So you can't pick a stinging side because neither one, no one is right yet everyone is. And uh, I, I, okay, what I meant to say is like no one's right but everyone's right. It's that kind of situation, you know. So yeah. So it's, you you can't pick a side with that whole argument, but they they were fighting most of the book, and then um, uh, which is sad because they were my favorite couple. I mean, actually, Jack Gore and Claude were my favorite couple, but they didn't even have any scenes together until the third book, when you started seeing their feelings for each other, and then the fourth book they were officially together. Um, so I my guess is they got and finally got together in between books three and four, but yeah. So, but they were my favorite couple until Jack and Claude actually got together in the series because they're always been my favorite. Actually, Cleo and Deuce probably been my favorite, but they, they had, um, but they, I think the most things they had were in the book two. Um, so yeah.
So I guess Melinda and Jackson are my favorite, but I still really like them together. You know, and they even break up at one point because um, Jackson was tired of uh, feeling like a second choice to Melody, which I get. Um, but I understand why Melody would want to take this gig, but at the same time, it's wrong to make commitments. It's like, uh, it's just complicated. <laughs> so, um, uh, she uh, even meets this gargoyle who um, uh, they start getting close, and Jackson was jealous. And um, no, and that's also wrong. That at that that part of the fight, I understand. I am on Jackson's side because Melody, like, she accidentally used her voice, her siren voice, on Jackson, got him to go home because he wanted to leave, and she wanted to stay at the club. And then she was she would talk to uh, Garrett. Uh, um, Talking isn't wrong though, but it's like she let him give her a ride, and they would get really close, and um, it's just it's it's wrong. It's really really wrong to. She was basically kind of flirting with him, which is wrong. I mean, flirting is bad when you're in a relationship. It is. Um. So yeah. And um. So yeah. Like Laura uh, has like all her friends helping her get this whole thing um, organized. Frankie and Brett end up winning conversa uh, the competition even though their her Frankie's speech sucked for it, and Cleo did a really awesome job. Haley and Heath had dropped out, and um, so um, Frankie and Brett won. Later on, Frankie found out that Spectra and Billy, who are now together, by the way, had um, uh which uh, messed with the ballots and made it so Frankie and Brad won when, um, when in reality Cleo and Deuce won. So um, Frankie felt really bad trying to give it to Cleo but wouldn't tell Cleo what's actually happened because the inspector and Billy would get in trouble so Cleo didn't want to, like, to knock off to a second choice or something. <laughs> so they thought about that because Frankie didn't want this if she didn't earn it and Cleo didn't want it if it wasn't given to her even though technically it was but she doesn't know that. Um, and then um, the people that were supposed to see the school came a day early and everything was a disaster, nothing was working right and Director Laura thought she had had a whole other day to fix everything, turns out she was wrong and then um, it was this French girl who barely understood English and then this, um, how do I, he's a perv I guess, I, could, I think that they even said that at one point, like that's what they called him. He's a perv. He hits on every girl he sees, even though he's probably in his late 40s, and they're all teenagers. I mean, technically, they're all about to graduate, so the majority of them that are probably 18, but still, still, that's still just, mm. um, he hit, hit on Melody at one point. I don't remember if he hit on Dr. Laura or not. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, Melody ends up getting a tour, uh, meets this guy and uses her siren voice to get a tour, um, uh, to get the band a tour and um, made, uh, I forgot the uh, gargoyle's name, but made him the manager. And um, uh, everything goes wrong with this whole tour for uh, Drafty Laura. Um, and ev nothing was working right, and uh, not to mention Melody and Jackson's fight. And then um, they, they break up because they thought they were only on a break, but then they broke up like right there. And then Melody's like, oh my god. Or not, Dracula was like, oh my god, stop, let's leave. And then they go to the roof where Dracula, oh, Dracula, what? I can't even pronounce his name. Melody and the gargoyle are seen kissing, and Jackson's like helping Dracula with the tour, so he sees it. And, but when, when as she, they kiss, Melody was thinking, and she was like, um, yeah, sure, this kiss is hot, but there's nothing to it. And that's when she realized that it's Jackson she loves, it's Jackson that she wants to be with. Um, but after he sees the kiss, she thinks that that's gone. It's not going to happen again. So um, everything is a mess and nothing's working right. And then Jack Lore and then with Frank and Cleo um, fighting over the shoes that they were supposed to wear um, for this whole thing and fighting over who gets to do this contest. And um, Jack Lore just has enough and like just yells at everyone. She's like, no, stop. And... Uh, I love watching Jack Laura just lose her crap. She's like, she's like the kindest person you ever meet, but she w she can't be fierce if she gets if you push her the right way, which you don't see very often because it does take a lot to push her that far. But 
in this book with everything that happened, goes on with her dad and this contest and these uh, two people. I forgot what their names are. Um, but she, she, she's just pushed to her limits and she can't handle it anymore. So yeah, she snaps a couple times to her dad, to the contest people, and they leave. Um, so um, at the end it's um, graduation for the seniors. Um, what, what did I say this is graduation? Okay, they're not graduating, but so, there was a graduation because Candace graduated. She's Melody's sister. Um, she graduated. Um, and then her, her college boyfriend, Rebecca, because he went to the graduation with her little sister, found out that um, Candace isn't in college. And she was going to, go, she was, uh, she's going to Paris, I think it was, for um, a year abroad or something. And Delaney and Spectra were going um, for the summer before school started back up. Um, yeah, and then it shows, um, and then it goes to, um, end of, uh, and then it shows Melody about to leave, and, um, she, th Jackson hasn't talked to her in a week, and she thinks he, um, doesn't care anymore, and, uh, yeah, so, um, and it's just really sad, and then, um, she was really hoping he, she would see him before she leaves to see if she cares because she wasn't going to like beg for him or anything but she wanted to see if he cared and he ended up um and then uh, she ends up uh, right before she leaves she ends up getting a call from Jackson who and he was currently um as Hyde um and um Melody kind of smiles herself she's like yes that means that she d he does care he didn't just forget about her he has been why she hasn't seen him all week is because he had purposely turned himself into Hyde uh, so that um, so that he can cope because he didn't want because it was too hard to be part of Melody I guess I'm, I'm probably explaining this fairly poorly but I'm sure you hope you understand what I'm getting at so yeah so she, she was like you know we do need a roadie because like since the gargoyle is now their um manager they need a roadie for the summer tour and he's like i'm in and so it never says for sure that they got back together but i'm pretty sure they do um especially in the last chapter when um dracula says something about a little makes a little crack about siren uh, during his speech and then melody and jackson both laugh like jackson was still upset at her and if they were still apart he wouldn't have laughed so I'm pretty sure they got back together. Um, I would think I think it was it would have been nice if they like made her like really like actually mentioned them getting back together. But yeah. Um so he was um so Dracula and Vincent to name the school Monster High and which everyone loved. And for some reason the normal school closed down Mercer High. I don't know why. I don't remember why. I, I think the contest really blew holes in it, I guess. I don't know. But um, Jack Laura convinced him to let normies go there too. So now, so it's called Monster High, but they're all, but there's, it's more co accommodated for monsters need. Like Laguna, who's a sea creature, really needs to be able to dip her, um, us to dip into the, um, to uh, get into water every so often and stuff. So um, it's more accommodated to monster needs, which is, um, which is good, which is why I'm glad they all ended up going to this monster school. But I'm glad that normies could go too, so they don't lose everything they worked so hard to fight for for this past year. Has it only been a year for all these books? I honestly don't know. I think so, because I'm pretty sure each, all the books go back to back. Like, at the end of the first book was, um, uh, Becca's ultimatum for Melody, and then the second book it starts up like that. What was the end of the second book? What was the end of the second book? I don't remember the end of the second book. Oh yeah, it was the video. And then the third book starts up with everyone on the run. And then the third book ends with a party, party. and then um, fourth book, I think it mentioned it started... When did... How, how long? Because there was a short gap, but not long. Uh, ah, I, I skipped. Cause I think it mentioned. Cause I don't think it's in that first. I don't think it was that long. Uh, been a couple weeks, a month. 
I'm not going to be able to find it anyway. I'm not going to be able to find it, am I? Because I'm pretty sure they mentioned like how long it's been since the party at some point. Um, I don't think it was that long, so I'm just going to say a couple weeks. A week at the least. So, yeah. Um, maybe a couple months. But that at the most, because it wasn't that long of a gap. I know that much. So, yeah. Um, but with Jack Fuller was doing the speech. Jack Fuller was next to him on stage. And then, um, he said something about being proud of her and all the hard work she did to help with this school and then everyone ran inside to see the school and um jack Fuller and uh jack Fuller, uh jack Fuller, um was talking for a minute and she's like you really proud of me and he's like yeah of course i am and they had a real nice heart to heart she's telling him how he's never there how he always ignores her and this and that and she, um he's like it's because you you look it's like it's because you're just like your mother as well. I'm pretty sure he meant like appearance and personality. He mentioned something about her being like fierce and the only person that can um, challenge him. Because um, people usually don't challenge him, you know. He's Dracula. The Dracula. A remarkable is the word he used. Okay. Um, Um, Dracula is a lot like her, you know, always wanted to add a dash of color when Dracula wants everything to be like black and gray and stuff. And, um, and he doesn't like unpredictable. But they have a nice heart to heart. And, um, they hug and it was really nice and, um, so yeah. And that's how the book ends. So yeah, that's the final book and it ends with, um, um, them going to Monster High. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. I really like the cover for this book better than the other ones. I don't know, maybe it's just like pink and black lace thing around here. I don't know, I just really like it. I might be a little biased too because I'm a huge fan of Jack Laura, but uh, that's besides the point. So yeah, that's this book. It was fun read, and uh, if you guys like the movies, I do suggest the books. And now I need something else to read. Oh yeah, I have something else to read. Okay, yeah I do. Um, I have to read the second Owl Lost book. I'll give you the first Owl Lost review. I'll try to do it tomorrow. No promises. Um, with work and stuff, you know, I didn't even want to do this video today, but I was like, I need to get it done. I don't. I I'm already behind on reviews. I still need to do the Owl Lost one, the Maid one, um, which I'm going to do this weekend for sure. I'm going to make sure I do it. And then the Owl Lost one, I week this weekend at the latest, I'll do it. Um, I was busy last weekend, like um, uh, so yeah. Um, and then I'll probably finish the second book by the, this weekend. Actually, I know I will. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and do, like, the Maid one, the I Lost one, and the second book to the I Lost series. And then by then I should have already started the third book, depending if my mom finishes or not, it or not. So, we'll see. Um, so yeah, this was fun. So, please like and subscribe and comment your thoughts on this book. If you read it, if you haven't, if you want to read it, I do recommend it. It's the best in the series, but like I said, I might be a little biased because I am a fan of Jackie Laura. Um, but it did have its issues. Like, I had a lot of Melody and Jackson fighting issues I didn't like, you know, but there was a lot more Jackie Laura Claus scenes which I did like. And I love how it shows Jackie Laura's edgier side because you don't really get to see that very often, you know. Only when she you really push her, and like I said, she does. it's hard, kind of hard to push her into showing that part of herself, you know. And... Um, you get to see a different side for her, her more sassiness, her sarcastic tone when she does get to that point, uh, and you know, and like I said, in this book, she gets to that point a lot, you know, she's, she's beyond tired of her relationship with her dad, she's beyond tired of trying to impress these, um, uh, contest snobs, and she just, she, and no one's listening, no one's, um, uh, no, no one is, like, doing what they need to do to make sure it's done and she's just she's like sh she's at her breaking point in this entire book and it's something you don't see very often in Dracula and I love reading it and exploring a different side for her and um you know because she is more complex than a lot of people realize a lot of people do see her as like this 
um, Goody Two Shoes, who has the biggest heart of any monster in the world, which is, um, and there's just so much more to her that a lot of people don't see. So if you do want to see this side of Dracula, or then I definitely suggest reading the series. You do have to read it in order, or you'll be very, very confused. So yeah, and you don't really see the side of Dracula until the fourth book. Like I said, this book it has is mostly about her, besides Frankie and Melody, of course. Um, but the first book is mostly about Frankie and Melody. Second, uh, Frankie, Melody, and Cleo. Third, Frankie, and Melody, and um, uh, Claudine. Fourth, the Frankie, and Melody, and Dracula. And Dracula is in all the books, but this one really puts the spotlight to her, and you get to see that side of her. And I just love it, you know. And it's just, you know, there's more to Dracula than a lot of people see, and I love it and, because I love her and I love all sides of her. And I, I don't remember if we got to see that in the movies or not. I think at, at least one of the mo movies we kind of saw it a little bit more. Um, I, I, I think it, you might have seen it a little bit in the two movies that had a lot to do with her. Uh, Why your girl fall in love with she gets fed up with Valentine when she finds out what he's been through and she yells at him at the end. And then um, in, in uh, Fry's Camera Action when she's fed up with being used and lied to by Stoker. Um, so yeah, you do get to see her, that side of her a little bit in the movies too. And, um, but it's not really focused on as much as in this book. So I think you'll overlook that. So I don't know. Um, so yeah, this was fun and we'll talk later.